the blue room. Twenty years ago, my father was found dead there. <laughs> Scary. Ooh. Funny. Wow. When three super snoopers go on a jaunt with a haunt. Pardon me, but do you have a match? Oh, sure. <laughs> Silly, isn't it? But you won't laugh. You'll shiver instead. There must be a homicidal maniac loose in this house. <laughs> Trick. You mean to look like a ghost? No, to get all that clean laundry. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mr. Borders. I thought I'd give the ghost around here some competition now that you reopen the house. Always the best of the party, aren't you, Larry? <laughs> no, just scared of a little business for Dr. Carroll here. <laughs> Hiya, Doctor. Hello, Larry. Say, Nan, what would you say if a ghost asked you to dance? I'd say, that's the old spirit. <laughs> Why don't we? Excuse us. Not a ghost of a chance. Oh, no. Come on, up you go. <laughs> Nights like these bring back memories that wandered away. Stars that gleam bring a dream of two hearts that were gay. Skies on fire causing rainbows from heaven to fall. Love desire, always here so that I can recall one starry night. Two young people were dancing, one starry night, and I saw them romancing. A million thrills were in his eyes, and his glances possessed her. A million dreams were in her eyes. He caressed her so tenderly, stars gleaming bright. Saw their love in its glory. I can't forget how their lips met. As they kissed, he knew they'd be sweethearts forever. Their dream came true. One starry night. 
Nan, I've got a wonderful idea. I'd like to give you just a break and announce my engagement tonight. That should be thrilling. Who's the lucky girl? You are. Oh, no, Larry. Let's not get serious again. Can't we be happy just being friends? I don't want to be happy. I want to be married. Now, don't tell me you're in love with someone else. If I were, you'd be the first to know about it. Uh, may I? Oh, Larry, you remember Steve Randall. We met him at the Carter's last oh, summer. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, the writer. What you will be, dancing or conversation? It's only fair to warn you that if I concentrate on one, the other suffers. Then let's talk. Want to know why I invited you down here? Mm -hmm. Because you write such a wonderful mystery story. Oh, curses. Just when I thought I was beginning to make an impression. Well, here's a chance. As you've probably gathered by now, this house is supposed to be haunted. You want me to look into the legend? Oh, it's much more than a legend. Upstairs is a room. We call it the Blue Room. Twenty years ago, my father was found dead there. How did he die, do you know? We were never able to find out. The police finally caught it suicide, and the room hasn't been opened since. Nobody's lived here during all those years? Nobody. Not until my stepfather persuaded Mother to move back. Man, I don't know whether I can solve your mystery or not. But at least you've written a swell first chapter for me. like this coming way out here in the middle of the night. Oh, it gives me the creep. Let's go back. Oh, relax. This is our big break. And I think it was darn nice of Nan to invite us. Yeah, but why up here? <laughs> He's a cheerful little number, isn't he? Yeah, he looks like an advanced agent for a Nicky Finn. <clears throat> hey, Dracula, how soon before we get there? No hurry now. Much more hurry when you come back. I don't see why we couldn't audition the act someplace else. I know about this house. It's haunted. I read about it in the Sunday magazine section. You did what? Well, somebody read it to me. But I know it's haunted. It was called The Mystery of the Blue Room. And it's got goblins out there. We're not going to stay there. We're taking the three o'clock train back. Three o'clock. That's the hour when they strike. For 20 years now, they wait. Who's they? The evil one. Spirits that haunt the blue room. <laughs> Mr. Ballers, I'm afraid my attempt to initiate the ghost mansion didn't go over so well with your wife. Ghost mansion? No. Larry, I wish you wouldn't refer to it as a ghost mansion. I'm hoping that all the stories about the blue room and about this house will be forgotten after tonight. I'm afraid not, sir. If you'll excuse my saying so. What do you mean, Edwards? In readying the house, sir, during the past few weeks, I've noticed many disturbing things. Like what, for instance? I can't exactly explain, sir, except that the house is haunted. Superstitious bunk. Edward, I'll bet when you were a kid, you once saw a mystery play where there was a sudden clap of thunder and the lights went out. <laughs> oh, oh. Boy, that's what I call service. What do you suppose happened, dear? Follow the power line. Get some lamps, will you? <laughs> You're not scared, are you? Oh, darling, I'm awfully frightened. Judging from that music, I'd say the pianist is, too. I say, old man, can't you play something a little more cheerful? Larry, you got some matches. Frank! What? Look, there's nobody at the piano. What's making it play? I don't know. Not a player piano. I've ever seen. Oh, Frank, can't we have some lights? Of course, yes. Edwards, where are those lamps? Edwards! Oh, this is ridiculous. Someone's playing a trick on him. Excuse me. Oh. What made it play? Let's not worry about that now. Where's the orchestra leader? Here. You have your boys play something, please. Certainly. Come now. Fess up. Is this the surprise you had in store for us? No, that will come later. <laughs> I'm sure it will be simply grim. <laughs> What's all this about a surprise? I've invited some entertainers down tonight. Three girls I used to work with in a nightclub. What do you mean to say that you used... Mm -hmm. That was the season when all the debutantes were singing for their supper. But Dad soon put an end to that. <laughs> Big pardon, Miss Nance, but some friends of yours are on the way up. The gateman just called. Well, that must be the girls. Excuse me, I'll be back in a few minutes. Cozy little Morgan. <laughs> Queen! Queen! 
mother here calling me that. Hiya, Kim. Oh, it's fine. It's good to see you again. Come on in. Sure. How's the trip? Fine, I guess. A little spooky. Yeah, it was so dark, even the owls were flying by into it. <laughs> Edward will show you where you can change. Edward? Not Steve? Gee, a real butler. How long have you been playing here, buddy? Thirty years, madam. Thirty years? Gee, that guy's really got a good agent. Who are the three girls, man? Interested? Oh, no. Just curious. You'll find out. You're interested in her, aren't you? You bet. Since she was that high, I hope to marry her someday. Larry. Hmm? You can't marry her. What? I said you can't marry Nan. Now, wait a minute. Nan and I want to get married. Neither you nor anyone else is going to stop us. Believe me, Larry, I know what I'm talking about. You better listen to me. Doc, all I want from you is pills. Not advice. Let's go outside. I want to tell you something, my boy, and when I'm finished, you'll see why Nan couldn't possibly marry you. May I have your attention, please? I'd like you to meet some very good friends of mine. Some girls with a lot of talent. The three jazzy bells. Okay, bells, ring out. <laughs> A do 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 because there's something I want you to do for them. What's that? Come on, darling, let's dance, and I'll tell you all about it. Wouldn't have anything to do with my owning a theater chain by any chance. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Good night. Such a nice party. Good night. Good night. Thank you for an entertaining evening, especially the ghost show. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed you singing so much. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Frank. See you tomorrow, George. Good night. I'll see how the girls are getting along. All right, darling. Well, it's been quite an evening. Yes, it has. Uh, Mr. Baldridge, will you do me a favor? What is it? Let me uh, see the blue room. What on earth for? No particular reason, just to satisfy curiosity. Well, Mary, personally, I have no objection, but I don't know how Mrs. Baldridge should feel about it. Feel about what, dear? Larry wants me to open the blue room. Hey, that's not a bad idea. I'd like to see it myself. Oh, please, not after what happened in there. Well, why not, Mrs. Baldridge? Mr. Kirkland's suicide shouldn't condemn the room to solitary confinement forever. Mr. Randall, I've never believed it was suicide. What makes you say that? It was something that happened the morning of his death. But during breakfast, he was called to the phone, and he returned muttering to himself something to the effect that he didn't intend being blackmailed the rest of his life, and he was going to stop it once and for all. When I asked what he was talking about, he refused to answer me. That night, he was dead. Well, suicide is one way to avoid the clutches of a blackmailer, probably the only sure way. 
Yes, and don't forget, Dale, when we broke in, we discovered the door and windows had been locked from the inside. Dad, the girls want to say good night to you. Excuse me, please. I want to thank you girls for coming down here tonight. Nan's been speaking to me about you. I feel sure if you take this card into our booking officer tomorrow, they'll be able to do something for you. See, that's swell. We can't tell you how much we appreciate this. Not at all. I'm only sorry I can't offer to put you up for the night. Oh, oh. we wouldn't dream of imposing on you. Yeah, we're the home type. We can hardly wait to get home. Yeah, we'll be going. And thanks again. Good night. I'll see you to the door. Good night. It was wonderful to see you girls again. And the act made a big hit, too. Sure, I hope so. Thanks for everything, man. Oh, the return of Frankenstein. Where's the station wagon trainer? It's at the main gate, miss. I came for the bags. Bags? He's not only gruesome, he's insulting. Well, good luck, kids. Let hey, me know how you make out. We sure will. Oh, good night. Good night. Good night. We did it. And we're still here to tell the tale. I don't feel safe though until we're home in bed. Oh, now, wait a minute. Don't be silly, kids. Tell me one thing. What could possibly happen to us now? Pardon me, but do you have a match? Oh, sure. Thank you very much. You're quite welcome. said downstairs, sir. I understood you wished to open up the room. I said nothing of the kind. Oh, I misunderstood, sir. I'm sorry. Chief, I'm over here. Stumbled over something and grabbed the curtains as I fell. Are you all right? <laughs> yes, a little on the dusty side. These spooks are very careless about their housekeeping. Well, they've had it all themselves for the past 20 years. If I'd had my way, I'd have cleaned it up long ago. So this is the blue room. Yeah, this is it. Mr. Bullard? Yes? I'd like to sleep here tonight. What a strange request. Why? Just to prove your point. And to call this a ghost mansion is superstitious bunk. No, I don't think you should do it, Larry. Neither do I. Why don't you think so? Because I want to sleep here myself. Why don't you save those good ideas for the stories you write, Steve? All right, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll both spend the night here. Oh, no. I'm going to rough it alone. But I'll tell you what. If nothing happens tonight, if I don't catch pneumonia or something, you can sleep in here tomorrow night. What do you say, Mr. Borley? Well, apparently I have nothing to say about it. So I'll just go to bed. Okay, you win. I'll see you in the morning. I hope. <laughs> Seriously, Larry. I hope you'll be all right. Of course I will. Good night, sir. Good night. Good night, Steve. Good night.
the blue room. Hmm. Eight thirty. I uh, guess everything went well last night. Last night? What do you mean? Mr. Dearden slept there. Didn't Mr. Baldrige tell you? You better have a breakfast tray ready in case Mr. Dearden should want to send up to his room. Mr. Dearden, did you ring, sir? Mr. Dearden. What's the matter, Ruth? I don't know, sir. Mr. Dearden rang a moment ago, but the door's locked and he doesn't answer. Larry! If this is another of his jokes. What's wrong, Larry? Larry doesn't answer. Oh, I knew something would happen if he slept in there. Now, dear, nothing has happened yet. Larry, open the door! Give me the key, Edward. I'm sorry, sir. I only had the key to the padlock. Key's on the inside. We better break in. All right. Where is he? If I may venture the opinion, sir, it would appear that Mr. Dearden opened the window and, and leaned out too far. Oh, no! Please, mother. Now, now, you mustn't be upset. You say he just rang? We received the signal in the kitchen, sir. The indicator there still points to the blue room. morning we hello inspector mcdonald please and that's all you can tell me about his disappearance you know as much about it as we do inspector who was in the house when larry dearden first discussed opening a blue room why all of us and uh, edwards of course is that all well, what about those friends of yours nan as i recall they were in the house the girl well that's ridiculous they didn't hear larry ask to have the room open they didn't even know him. What girls? Some entertainers who were down for the evening. But they couldn't have had anything to do with it. You better give me their names and where they can be reached. Take this down, Curtin. We open Monday. First show is another. Better get the theater by 10 for rehearsal. Oh, we're halfway there already. <laughs> that must be them. Say, are you girls uh, three jazzy bells? Uh-huh. Good news sure travels fast. We're from the police department. Why, I suppose you want us to appear at the policeman's benefit ball? Well, we might be able to consider it if you're out of jail in time. Oh, I think we should rest. Jail? Hey, what goes on here, officer? There's been some complaints. We were told to pick these girls up. Why, is the act that bad? But what have we done? Come on, let's get going. Wait a minute. We got a booking starting the day after tomorrow, and you can't do this to us. They'll be released in time to keep their engagements, won't they? Maybe they will, and maybe they won't. Oh, wait a minute, fellas. This is murder. Yeah. How did you get? You didn't hear any sort of noise after that. No. We picked them up and they was acting mighty suspicious, if you ask me. Well, nobody asked you. Say, so you can't get away with this. What's the idea of dragging us way up here anyhow? It's always customary to return suspects to the scene of the crime. Well, that's different. Suspects? Well, what happened here anyway? Larry's disappeared. Larry? Who's that? You see, Inspector, they've never even heard of him. I'll handle this if you don't mind. Where did you go after you left this house last night? Right straight home. Yeah, we didn't stop for anything. That's right, Inspector. You can check up on us. We've never been in any trouble before. Inspector, I don't think these kids are any more guilty than I am. You may be right. Well, in that case, we'll be going along. Well, it's been nice knowing you. If you need any help, please feel free to call on us. Wait a minute. There's just one more thing. How come the gatekeeper didn't see you leave the grounds last night? Oh, well, we left by the side gate, the one that leads to the cemetery. Sure, we would have gone out the regular way, but after that ghost came up and asked for a match to light his cigarette... Ghost? And it was so scary when he tipped his derby... That you saw a ghost? That's right. And in the derby. And you lit a cigarette for him? Yes. Yeah. That does it. Everybody stays in this house. Panic and see nobody leaves. Curtin, come with me. Excuse me. This sounds awfully serious, man. It is. One of our guests, Larry Dearden, slept in the blue room last night. This morning he's gone. Where'd he go? A question like that, after the right moment, is liable to revolutionize the detective business. You know, Nan, 
I've been thinking. Well, that's a good idea. But thinking. Well, we better figure out a way to get out of here in time for that first show. Can you really think it's all right for us to try and solve this case ourselves? Why not? The inspector's going to keep us here until they find the guy anyway. It may take 20 minutes before that happens. Yeah, and we can't afford to wait a minute over 19. The blue room. I wonder why they call it the blue room. I don't know. Maybe it's because the last guy that was in there blue. Do you really think that room's haunted? No. If I did, I'd just be silly. <laughs> why don't you go in and see me? I'm not that silly. Let's see what's down here. Let's try to be very quiet. Yeah, let's not get in any trouble. I'm allergic to jail. Who's the square? That's Mr. Kirkland, Nan's real father. He died in the blue room. You know, I'll bet there's something behind us. What, is it? No, the picture. <laughs> Where'd that come from? I don't know. All I did was touch the picture. Like this. <laughs> Talking pictures. Come on. <laughs> I have a hunch that if we can solve the mystery surrounding your father's death, we'll have the answer to Larry's disappearance. Well, I've read all the testimony that was taken at the inquest. If there's anything you'd like to know... How many of the people who are in the house now were also present when your father was shot? Let's see. There was Mother and my stepfather. He was Dad's lawyer at the time. And Dr. Carroll and Edward. Last night, your mother said something very interesting. That she suspected your father was being blackmailed at the time of his death. Yes, I've heard her mention that before, but it was never proven. It strikes me that if any blackmailing was going on, well, the people most likely to be in possession of such damaging information would be the family doctor and the family lawyer. Are you implying that Dr. Carroll and my stepfather had no, any... I'm not implying anything. Now, look, Nan. Last night you asked me to help you. That's all I'm trying to do now. But I don't see what this all has to do with Larry. Well, just this. Suppose Larry found out who was blackmailing your father, or how your father was killed. Then the murderer would have to get rid of him, too, wouldn't he? You know, I've just realized something. If it were possible for someone to get into the blue room with the door and the windows locked, then it must be possible for someone to get out the same way. Exactly, Nan. And spoken like a true detective. <laughs> yes, now you've even got me doing it. No. No. Oh, please let me go. I tell you, I didn't do it. You must believe me. Oh, it's no use. He does know anything he's not telling. Another good idea gone wrong. Well, now what do we do? My suggestion, madam, is that you release me from this chair. Yeah, so that I can get to the phone and inform my lawyer of this outrage. Oh, gee, Edward, you wouldn't do that. After all, we're only trying to solve the mystery. Yeah, and anyway, all we did was grill you. Madam, I am not a hamburger. And furthermore, if it ever got out that I'd been subjected to the treatment of a common criminal, me, with a spotless reputation of 30 years, the perfect gentleman is a gentleman. Oh, well, don't worry, Edward. We'll keep it a secret, if you will. Sure, you can trust us, Edward. No one outside of this room will ever know. I'd even sign it in blood. <coughs> I had any blood. I don't know. My mother warned me against people like you. She says acting is the devil's profession. Hey, are you trying to say actors are bad? <laughs> in your case, decidedly, yes. Well, I'll have you know that we were good enough to sing in the same nightclub with Miss Nan. Oh, indeed. Oh, you don't believe it, huh? Well, let me tell you something. She came out and sang a very torchy ballad. Then we came out and did a comedy number. In fact, we'll show you. <laughs> Ooh, the boogie better get wise, 
Cause if he tries, he will soon have you beaten this rhythm when you meet the boogie 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 man. Someone's about starting the town with new kinds of rhythm. You may meet the boogie woogie boogie man. Better beware, better take care, cause if you don't, you go along with them when you meet the boogie woogie boogie man. If you see him, won't you really hex him? Yes, that man can really vex him. With his base, he almost wrecks him. tell you this. You're all to occupy the same rooms you slept in last night. No one is to leave his room till morning for any reason. Good night. Good night, Inspector. Good night. What about the girls, Inspector? They didn't sleep here last night. Oh, don't worry about us. We're just planning to stay up all night. Why? Oh, nothing. Just getting in practice for five shows a day. We don't want to miss anything in case anybody tries some funny business. Yeah, and don't think our art couldn't stand some funny business. <laughs> hey, this guy says he's got to see Dr. Carroll right away. Excuse me for intruding, sir. Yes, what is it? Dr. Carroll, my wife's going to have a baby and Dr. Mitchell's out of town. So I was wondering if you could, that is, if you'd be willing to... Oh, yes, yes. Of course. Edwards, will you get my things? Yeah. Where do you live? In the caretaker's cottage, sir, about a mile away. Hannigan. Yes, Keith? You better go along in case the doctor needs a little help. Right. Thank you, Inspector. Your subtlety is most gratifying. Too bad, Harry. Good night, Frank. Good night. Oh, it's and all's well. Thank goodness for this coffee. I feel so wide awake. Why don't you go to bed and sleep it off? Why don't we all go to bed? Everybody's been asleep for hours and nothing's happened. Oh, no. We're going to stay up till morning if it takes all night. The name of the murderer is. The name of the murderer is. What are you doing that for? Well, every time you say that, somebody's supposed to take a shot at you. The name of the murderer is. What's that? It came from over there. Oh, there's very pebbles at the window. Maybe somebody wants to get into the house. Oh, who'd want to get into this house? Well, there's one way to find out. Peggy, wait a minute. I'm not that anxious to know. I did open the window before he started throwing rocks. Yeah, but suppose he starts throwing them after you open it. Oh. <laughs> Pardon me, lady. Which way to the cemetery? That way. Thank you. Kindly. You look like you've just seen a ghost. You can say that again. Can you imagine a ghost getting locked out of his own house? Maybe he lost his skeleton key. Coffee, honey, this is cold. Drink hearty, gals. It looks like a long, long night. Hey, this coffee tastes better. Why is that? That's what I just saw. Anything it tastes good. It is better, though. Who knows? Maybe something new has been added. What's that? Old Faithful again. Sounds like someone's in the hall. Come on, let's see what it is. You mean what it is? Well, around here, you never can tell. Oh, who is this? Who's 
there. Yes. You had it scared for a minute. Where are you going? Up to the blue room to sleep. But why? I promised Larry. Besides, I have an idea it may help to solve his disappearance. Okay. Your funeral. Don't talk like that. Good night, Phil. Good night. Good night. Now. Gotta stay up and catch the murder. Mm -hmm. Catch the murder. It's the blue room again. You stay right here. What made you think I was going anywhere? Excuse me, sir. I think you ought to know that. I just received a signal from the blue room. I left instructions no one was asleep there last night. As far as I know, nobody did. Come on. It's not locked, but something's holding it. through the heart. Know him? Yes. Mary did. Oh, Frank, go. Oh. <laughs> you better take us with him. Well, at least we got the corpus delecti. Now all we need is a couple of suspects. <laughs> Homicidal maniac loose in this house. He ain't dead, but still breathing. Pour some of that coffee. Mm -hmm. Where am I? You're all right. Don't worry. Come on. Come on, wake mm -hmm. up. Darling. Hey. Oh, what's you, crumpled put? You just found a body in the blue room. You girls wouldn't know anything about it, would you? The blue room? Poor Steve. I knew we shouldn't have let him go up there. What's that about Steve? Oh, man, it's all our fault. He insisted on spending the night in the blue room, and we didn't stop him. But it wasn't Steve we found up there. It wasn't. Do you know where this Steve Randall is now? No, I was looking for him myself, but I can't find him. Well, that's just dandy. One guy sleeps up there, and he disappears. Another guy sleeps up there, and he disappears. And what do we find instead? The body of the first guy. What do you make of that? Oh, uh, well, let's see. Uh, the first guy sleeps there. Then the second guy disappears. Then the second guy's body... The first... Curtain. Uh, you better go out and search the grounds again. Anything wrong? Yes, Doctor, something is wrong. Steve Randall disappeared. No. And we found Dearden's body. Where? Up in the blue room. In the blue room? Yes. Do you want to go up and take a look at it, Doc? Well, yes, yes, of course. Were you with the doctor all night? Yes, he wasn't out of my sight for a minute. Are you sure you didn't fall asleep at any time? <laughs> Had a chance I had to sleep. That guy's wife had triplets. Well, I guess that eliminates the doctor. Yeah, but now you've got three new suspects. And what's the connection between Larry's death and Steve's disappearance? That question's been running through my brain all day. You don't think that Steve was jealous of Larry, do you? I've hardly known him long enough for that. 
still, I can't help feeling that I'm at least partly responsible for Larry's death. Oh, no, you must talk like that. But if only I'd been kinder to him. If I'd promised to marry him, maybe this wouldn't have happened. I'm afraid Larry could never have married you, ma'am. Why not? Well, just have faith in what I'm saying. But I want to know, was there anything wrong with him? No, no, nothing. Then why shouldn't I have married him if I wanted to? Because Larry Dearden was your brother. Your half-brother. Sam Kirkland, your father, was in love with Larry's mother years ago. I'm sorry to have had to tell you this, but... Under the circumstances, I, I thought you should know. I understand, Doctor. Thank you. Oh, it's no use, kids. I don't feel like rehearsing. Me neither. I feel lower than last week's salary. We have to, kids. Do you realize it's only 24 hours away from the opening and we haven't even got a dance routine set? So what? We'll never make the show. No, if the racist investigation is going, when we leave here, we can move right into the old ladies' home. Oh, but things happen like that. If we hadn't come here in the first place, we wouldn't even have a job. Yes, and now that we did come and got the job and can't leave, why, it's the same as if we hadn't come to get the job we can't have. You speak English, too? <laughs> oh, come on, kids. Let's snap out of it. This isn't like us to let something get us down. Let's do something cheerful, like um, dance away your blues. Or oh, every cloud must have a silver lining. Uh -huh. All I can think of is old man Moles is dead. <laughs> I don't have to tell you. My knees are beating it out in more clothes. Look, the sooner we solve the mystery, the sooner we can get out of here. Yeah, but I don't want them to be playing sad music when I leave. Oh, don't worry. Nothing's going to happen to you. Come on. Well, all right, but I'm only doing this to avoid a scene. Mm. Look, 
Let's not rush into this thing. Why don't we come back in a year or two? your mother say about this? But I didn't do it. You didn't do what? What do you think, miss? Then who's been working these gadgets? I was only obeying orders. Orders? Why must it always be the butler? So you're the one who's been doing all this funny business. Only it isn't funny for us. You know, they build jails for people like you, Edward. Disturbing the peace. That's what you've been doing. Hey, and how can we be sure you aren't the murderer? Murder is a horrid word, Edward. And you're supposed to so would I. What are you girls doing down here? We've just been getting a confession from your butler, Mr. Baldrige. Confession? Mm hmm He turned out to be quite the mystery man. Oh, no, sir. I'm innocent. All I did was to follow Mr. Dearden's instructions. Dearden? Yes, sir. He paid me to operate these devices. But why? I'm not sure, sir. But I believe he wanted to frighten everybody. So that when he volunteered to sleep in the blue room, Miss Nan would be impressed by his bravery. Well, how come you're still working this stuff after he disappeared? Well, first, I thought that was part of his scheme. But when his body was found this morning, I decided I'd better dismantle the apparatus. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't be knowing about that coffee that made us go to sleep last night, would you? I'm sorry, miss, but I couldn't take the chance of spoiling Mr. Dearden's plan. Well, all right, everybody, don't touch a thing. We're all going upstairs and have a nice long talk. Oh, dear. Mr. Baldrige, you were Sam Kirkland's lawyer, weren't you? Yes, and his friend. And Mrs. Baldrige, did you and your first husband get along well together? Why, of course. What do you mean by that? How soon after his death were you two married? About a year. I don't see what all this has to do with Mr. Baldrige. I'm convinced there's a connection between Kirkland's death and that of Larry Dearden. Well, I think you're way off the mark. Why don't you try and locate Steve Randall first? I agree with Frank, Inspector. Find Randall and you've got the key to your mystery. Yeah, why don't you find Randall? you get this? I stumbled across it in the cellar. It was lying under the staircase. Why didn't you show it to me before? Because they found a clue. Yeah, why don't you go find your own? Does anyone here know whose gun this is? Why, it looks like my husband. Doesn't it, Frank? Yes, I think it does. Can't you be sure? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. One shot has been fired. What? And the bullet the coroner removed from the body of Larry Dearden was the same caliber as this gun. Well, that proves nothing. I'm sorry, Mr. Bullock. I'll have to hold you on suspicion of murder until I get a report from our ballistics expert. No. It's all too preposterous. Maybe so, but it won't be the first time the man who sent for the police turned out to be the guilty party. You mean you're going to arrest him like a common criminal? Let's just call it a formality, Miss Kirkland. I think you're making a big mistake, Inspector. Now we've really done it. Can you imagine Mr. Baldrige going to jail? And we're the ones who are sending him there. Well, there's only one way we can square ourselves. We've got to solve this mystery tonight. How? By sleeping in the blue room. What? Oh, no, now let's not overdo this thing. Steve was right. The blue room is the answer to this whole thing. The only way to get the answer is to spend a night in there. Who is going to spend what and where? You know what's going to happen to us if we do. Tomorrow we'll disappear and they'll find Steve's body. Yeah, this could turn into a vicious circle. Well, suit yourselves, kids. But I'm going to spend the night there. Oh, Peggy, oh we won't let you do it. No use arguing. I made up my mind. Okay, you win. But something tells me tomorrow there are going to be three new ghosts haunting this house. Don't show up. Hey, I just got 
had a terrific idea. Why? Let's go back. No. Come on. But are you a man or a mouse? Right now, I wish I was a mouse. Isn't it? Yeah, now I know where the duck bowl went to. Why are you closing the door? You don't want anybody to get in, do you? I'm not worried about anyone getting in. It's about us getting out. You mean we're going to sleep in there? Can you suggest a better place to sleep? But that's where they found the body this morning. So what? Oh, I don't like dead people. They're not my type. Oh, come on. Get in. Well, here goes oh, nothing. My. Are you sleeping with your robe on, dear? Sure, you never can tell who may drop in. I can't do it. Oh, force yourself. Come on. <laughs> no, boy. There's something in there. Something cold and flaky. It's only my flashlight. Now, oh, come on. Get in and get to sleep. All right, but I'm still scared. Well, then you get over here, move in the middle, and then nothing can hurt you. All right, but I know I'll hate myself in the morning for this. Oh. Oh. Now, just relax and go to sleep. Good night. Good night. Pleasant nightmare. I wish you'd keep your hands to yourself. What are you talking about? I didn't touch you. Don't tell me. I felt it. All right, if I did, it was an accident. I'm sorry. Well, okay. Look. Well, you didn't have to hit me. I said I was sorry. I didn't touch you. Oh, don't give me that innocent act. What? Oh, will you quit arguing? I guess you have to keep you two separated. Now, come on, let me get in the middle. No! Oh, yes, you it. are. I don't want to go yeah, at all here. I don't see why I have to be the one to get the worst of it. You're nothing but the right, right on Kathy. I'm so always getting hit any different things. I don't want to go to sleep here. I don't want to go to Look, kids, you don't have to drag me into this. Now, don't tell me you're going to start something. Me start something? Well, I like that. I suppose that wasn't your hand crawling all over my face. It was not. Well, it wasn't me, so it must have been her. Oh, you're crazy. I didn't come anywhere near her. All oh, the trouble with you is your right hand doesn't know what your left hand is doing. The trouble is I don't know what either one of them's doing. Oh, well, well, well that could be. I have to be very happy you if you want to fight, leave me out of it. I am sleepy. Oh, God, I wonder. <sighs> now what? I thought I heard something. Oh, lie back, you're dreaming. Didn't you hear a noise that wasn't here no. before? I mean, did you not hear a noise that was here before? I mean... What's eating you? I know. The stop clock. Huh? Mm -hmm. The clock stop. Well, I wish you'd follow its example. Nothing doing. I'm going to set that clock ahead. Oh, what are you going to set it ahead for? In case the ghost comes up to me and says, your time has come. I want to be able to give them an argument. Oh. Oh, Betty, that's my... Ow! 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 the job. All right. But don't you think we'd better arm ourselves? It's not a bad idea. Hey, how about those fire irons? All right. Come on, Betty. What for? Oh, don't you want something? No, I'll just use my brain. <laughs> You're a dead kid. <laughs> Here. I know just what's the matter. What's the matter? I don't know what I'm doing. 
Besides, I heard a noise. What about you? Well, I was sitting here smoking a cigarette, and I started toying with this lion's head. It seemed to be loose. Then I happened to turn it. And look. Secret passage. Well, where does it lead to? That's just what I mean to find out right now. This may provide the evidence that we're looking for. Well, let me go with you. Well, now, it may not be safe. You better wait here. It wasn't me, was it? I guess this finishes your book for you. 
too bad I won't be there for the happy ending. Say, did you see Steve and Nan give each other that certain look across the breakfast table? I'll bet we'll be going to a wedding pretty soon. Not if it's in that house, we won't. Why not? It's a mystery solved, isn't it? Yeah, but there's still a lot of queer things going on. Things that no one can explain. I know what you mean. Boy, I know I wouldn't go back there if they gave me a million dollars. You and me both. <laughs> Oh, this is the end. Thank you.